everybody. I'm the Gulf Coast Granny, and we're in the kitchen today, but we're not doing any cooking. I'm going to set up this um, quarantine aquarium because I got some new fish. Look at that. It's an angel fish. Can you see it? That's a beauty right there. So, I got that one. And I got some, oh, you can't, Harlequin Rasporas. There they are down there in the bottom seat. I got this pretty little, almost a koi angelfish. I don't know if it's a koi or a blushing, but we'll find out when it gets older. And I got this beautiful flame garami. And he is fit to be tied in this bag, y'all. So we're going to get him in this tank. In just a minute. I need you. Poppy's here with me. Say hello, Poppy. Hello, Poppy. <laughs> what do we need to do first? Put water in it, honey. We need to put water in it first. <laughs> Let's get her going. Now... This is how I quarantine my fish. I might not do it like everybody else does, but you ready? I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. On your way. We have a pond pump that we use. And we're pumping it from my 55 gallon aquarium into this 20 gallon long aquarium. <clears throat> and it'll probably take a minute or four. <laughs> so the reason that I'm quarantining these fish <laughs> is because we haven't had enough quarantine in the past two months, have we? Is because I just got them from the local fish stores, two different fish stores, and I don't want to put them in my main tank because they might have some kind of diseases. They might have a fungus. They might have whatever. There's a disease called ick. It is very, very common in store-bought fish, in any fish, actually, that you get and, and you, you bring it to your aquarium, and then it makes all your other fish sick. So we're going to put these new fish in here for about a month, and I'm going to treat them with Super It Cure from API. That'll make them safe to put in the main aquarium when it's time. Y'all see that crystal clear water going in there? That makes me proud because that means that the water in my main aquarium is beautiful. <laughs> and really the only way that I keep it like that is I do a water change every week. I do about 20% and add more water to it. I don't have any plants in there right now. I don't have anything in there except for fish. And it's working. So that's a good thing. Well, you got your filters, your heater. Well, yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got a filter that's big enough for a hundred gallons, so it's on the back of a fifty-five gallon tank. And then I've got my heater in there. What else do I have? One decoration. And a twin filter pump, air I, pump. Oh, and an air pump that um, that runs a sponge filter, much like this filter here. Okay, we're halfway. Okay, cool. It's got a lot of air in it. No, nope, my bad. It's not, I mean, it's just, I don't want to pump air, I want to pump water. I wonder what temperature this water is. I just had to move the pump, honey. Oh, and it's still warm enough, too, even going through this tube and... You can probably start setting the uh, bags fish. in. Yeah, set the bags in. That's probably what I need to do. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the bags, the fish still in the bags, and we're gonna set them in there so that the temperature acclimates. Why do you do that? I don't know what temperature that is, but whenever I set it in here, I know that it's gonna be almost eighty degrees. 
82, I think. Now it takes about 15 minutes for them to acclimate, the, or for the water to come up to temperature. And the reason you do that is so that you don't shock your fish. Because if you shock your fish, you're going to kill them. Okay, come here. Pretty little fishies. Oh, that garami is angry. He's having himself a right fit. Oh, God, look at him, Wesley. I see him, Mom. He is so pretty. What do you think of this right here? That should be sufficient. All right, turn him off. All right, now we're going to just wait. Right now, Poppy is um, hooking up the air tube for the filter. I love these filters, y'all. They don't make a lot of noise. All you need is an air pump to run them. And when you clean them, you take the sponge off, you rinse it out in your fish water, and you stick it back in there. Super simple. Okay. Heater's plugged in. Your bubbles are plugged in. Now I'm going to put this in. Prime. Did you count? I did. And then I added a little bit more. I love that little yellow one there. Why don't you put your plants in? Oh, that's a good idea. Get me uh, scissors, please. Could you? Now, y'all got a really good deal on these plants because they said that they were in bad shape. Well, I can bring them back to life. And actually, this one looks beautiful. It just needs to come out of that pot. This, this is a crypto corine. Coriny undulata crypt for short, and then this is another crypt, I believe. Oh no, this is um, Angustifolia. And then, this is really the only one that looked bad. And I think the reason that it looked bad. Oh, let me get rid of this water first. A lot of times, these are grown out of the water before they're sold. And they're grown just like a regular house plant. So, when they put them in the water, what happens is the leaves melt away and they turn black and fall off but what happens is the new leaves come out and that's what's happened all these tall ones look terrible and our new leaves are coming out on the bottom nice and bright green with new roots and everything so i'm just going to cut it back and stick it in there all right so let's hope i can save this one going to have to get this one out of that pot or I could just trim its roots. Now I think I'm just going to leave it alone for now. The reason you do plants, number one, is to soak up the nitrates. There's a nitrite cycle. And you feed the fish, the fish poop, and it puts nitrites into the water, which turn into nitrates. Nitrates feed the plants and absorb it. So it makes the water more livable for the fish, and it keeps you from having to do so many water changes all the time if you get a well-planted aquarium. Now, I don't happen to have a well-planted aquarium yet, but it's a work in progress. 
So I used my prime. That's what that is. That's called prime. And what that does is it removes the chlorine and the chloramine from tap water. Now I didn't put tap water in there, but I did it just in case there was too many nitrites, too many nitrates, because it also detoxifies ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates, which are all products of fish waste. I added the prime prophylactically to make sure that there's no problems in advance. Now, this is my Super It Cure. I like API products. Um, I think they're the most trustworthy. I've never used anything else, so I, will, I don't know. This uh, Super It Cure also take, it takes care of two different problems. Um, Ick, which is a, a fish disease that causes white spots and deterioration of their fins. And also Cryptocarion which is a highly contagious parasitic disease. And that's one thing we want to avoid is parasites. There. Now, by using this syringe, I learned that one teaspoon is one capful. So I used four of those and put them in there. Is it time yet? Yes, ma'am. It is? Yep. Hi, baby dog. Y'all, we're about to let these fish loose. What I'm going to do is use the scissors, cut off the top, and pour this water into a fishnet. I'm not putting this water in my tank. My tank's clean. All right, stick him in there. Oh, look at that. He is so beautiful. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay. Next is the Rasborus. big gold one next. I mean, it's not huge, but it's probably quarter sized. Okay, y'all. See, there's the one angelfish there. Two of them, excuse me. And then all my little rasboras are up here by the top, schooling around like they like to do. So then, remember the garami that was acting all crazy? Well, he's hiding in the plants, y'all. <laughs> Which is kind of funny to me. Oh, he went around back so I can't even see him with the camera. So, y'all, the tank's been up now for about 48 hours. Those orange things back there are just tags on the other side of the aquarium. <laughs> I think they're fish every time I see them. Isn't that crazy? We've had a couple of losses. That garami is only pretty on the outside, y'all. He bit the head off of one of my rasboras. I don't know if the rasbora was dead when he bit it or if he was alive because I didn't see it happen. All I found was a body with no head. But now we did lose, when we put the rasboras in, within about two hours we had lost one. And that happens when you get new fish from fish stores or anywhere really. It can happen to any of them. He was probably just too little and too stressed and didn't make it. But um, the other one got his face taken off. <laughs> so, but I have the, um, the three fish. I've got the two angels. Where are they? They're in here. And the garami left. And I ended up having to go get another um, Cory catfish to kind of clean up the mess on the bottom. Y'all ain't going to believe this. So I have a siphon that vacuums the uh, aquarium. <laughs> and apparently my cats thought it was a toy. And I don't know if they chewed it or clawed it, but the plastic's real thin. Anyhow, it had holes in it, so it doesn't work anymore. There's no vacuum because of the holes. It's a little bit cloudy, but not too much. So I ended up putting a different filter on it. But I'll go ahead and show you what we've got here. The Cory catfish is kind of like the cleanup crew. He goes along the bottom and, and eats all of this 
food that the fish didn't eat. And that's one thing I'm worried about because these fish aren't eating like they should. Not yet anyway. There's my little Cory cat. Let me move this out of the way. There he is. There's the killer. I don't know if that's what I'm going to call him or not, but my goodness, he's not a very nice fish. But he sure is pretty. And here are the two angels. And they kind of stick together like that, and that's usually where they stay is back there behind that filter where the intake is. I don't know if it's because the heater's right there next to it or because they like the flow of the water. So that's the new aquarium, y'all. Like I said, it's just temporary until we make sure that these fish are healthy and they can go into the bigger aquarium. And in fact, I'll show y'all that now. Let's go. This, these are my big boys. That's a little guppy there. But that little guppy's about two and a half inches long. And there's, I don't even know what his name is. <laughs> but he's the aquarium boss. He's the boss of the whole place. And then we've got this one here. And his little friend back there that's kind of like a twin, just about. Those are the Harlequin Rasboras right there. There's three. And look at them. They're all sitting there waiting on me to give them some food. <laughs> but I just love my angelfish. I can't wait till I can get some discus fish, but that's going to be later. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Um, it's not the normal, but I thought I'd share my new stuff with you and show you how I put everything together. Y'all have a great day and I'll talk to you again real soon, all right?